That's good. My name is Roger Benedict. I represent a company called Rugs Benedict, which is a floor covering business up in the mountains at Vail, Colorado. Um, I started Rugs Benedict in 1972, part of a uh, sort of a vision of uh, the best job career path for me. Uh, I wanted to drop out of college and go be a hippie ski bum carpet layer. And it worked out pretty well from there. Uh, in spite of what my mother-in-law thought about it. But the, uh, the important thing was that because I chose Vail, and it was a little bitty mountain ski town in the 70s, and it grew very rapidly to become a big uh, internationally known resort, um, it was a great place to have a floor covering business because it grew fast, needed lots of flooring, so my floor covering business also grew rapidly right along with it. Um, the other thing that really contributed to the long-term viability of the business was that early on I learned how to work with FileMaker Pro and built custom tailored applications to run the business for me um, so that I could get away. Uh, because a little more about me, I love sailing, I love scuba diving, sea kayaking. None of those things are convenient in Vail, Colorado. So I needed to be able to get away to go do what I wanted, which means my business had to run as well when I was gone as when I was there. And that meant uh, really the FileMaker application. Now, my methodology is very simple. You'll see much nicer stuff from the other presenters here. Um, I build with FileMaker, kind of like working with Legos, where you pull out pre-made parts and snap them together. And with Legos, you end up with a castle or a rocket ship. Uh, with FileMaker, I would pull out you know, script steps, script triggers, portals, layout parts, buttons, whatever pieces I needed to snap together and make my business applications so that everybody could do what I wanted. Um, you can see this beginning one with just customers and phone numbers and email addresses. You know, Back in the early days, they started out pretty simple. Over the years, they got more and more complex, both as the business grew and the needs grew and the FileMaker capabilities grew. Um, one of the current things that really works well is I wanted my salespeople to be able to instantly email photographs and information of area rugs that we had in stock to potential customers. Um, and I thought the quicker and easier I could make that happen, the more frequently they'd do it and the more area rugs we'd sell. So by running it through um, all of the things that FileMaker makes so easy to automate emails with photos attached and things like that, uh, it was just a really nice running uh, part of the business. Um, over the years, after 20-some uh, years of adding one little thing at a time, I ended up with a uh, application that looked kind of like this. I had 56 separate files, each one performing an important slice of the business, none of them really appropriate to trash. Um, so my challenge was, and I was honestly quite afraid of it in 2017, to turn this into a new FileMaker application, all up to speed, all up to date. Um, when you look at this on a, on a spider chart, uh, the 56 files, um, each one with its part, one that I was also most proud of is there at the bottom right called Connector. Uh, that used the uh, plugin from Productive Computers to push all of our data into QuickBooks Enterprise so we could have professional quality accounting without any double entry. So I really had what I would call 30 years of business know-how trapped in this legacy system. And when you think of business know-how, it's kind of a big term that, that's worth a lot. But the real, where the rubber meets the road, uh, nitty gritty of it is the, how are we gonna do everything in the business all day long? When a truck backs up with a roll of carpet in it and the guys pull it off and stick it in the warehouse, how's that get handled? How's it get recorded? 
How do we do every step like that all day long, every day, consistently, rapidly, and accurately? And all that business know-how was trapped in my legacy system. A little bit more about the business, um, what we were dealing with. Uh, business was thriving in 2017. We had more than 50 employees. Inside the store, we had 15 workstations that were, you know, big screens with Mac minis attached. Uh, our warehouse next door ran entirely on iPads. Um, but the biggest thing is we had just relentless customer pressure. We were rolling out 10 to 15 installations every day. And for just a little standalone flooring business in a relatively small market, that's, that's a lot of volume. Um, every month, we'd create two to 300 new projects to push through our system. And our cumulative load of projects typically ran around 1,500 open projects at a time. Now, I would have never guessed that number. But because it was important to me to track projects from the beginning to the end, from when we have a first contact until we are you know, send out the thank you card and ask for a re review, um, I didn't realize we'd have that many in the pipeline. But that's how big the pipeline is. And the challenge is to keep it all together and to keep it all moving. Um, it was also really personal for me. Uh, I definitely had skin in the game as the owner, operator, and developer. Any money we lost was mine. Any money we made was mine. And uh, makes the decision making and the work a little more uh, motivating, I think. Um, at the time we did the transition, uh, we had about a million dollars in current inventory, carpet, area rugs, wood flooring pallets. Um, and it had to be actively managed so that we always had the right stuff in stock. We always had about a million dollars in current transaction business running. We were somewhere between the I do and I'm done, and things on order and coming and scheduling and you know, just an awful lot going on. Not a, not a ma and pa operation at all. And then the notion that we had 1,500 projects in the pipeline um, knowing our close rate and our average ticket, that meant to me we had about $7.5 million worth of business already in the pipeline. If we had no new customers at all, we could still push about $7.5 million out of where we were. So I kind of liken the situation I was in. I didn't, didn't really want to have to do it, but I did have to uh, change horses going full speed through the stream. There was no way to put it off, because I was still running in FileMaker 12, and I knew that was going to come to an end. I looked at some commercial applications from vendors that did other floor covering businesses, but they just didn't have the features that I needed. I kind of like running my store out at the pointy end of the bell curve, and standardized features just aren't going to you know, make that happen. Now, before I started, the rewrite project, the first thing I did was study the FileMaker developer manual. Uh, went through every chapter, every exercise, every quiz. I didn't memorize it. I'm not completely proficient in it, but I know where it is and I can look it up if I, if I need it. And that was a big help. And then the next thing I did was really just try and drill down on what's the scope of this project? What's it need to look like when I'm done? And I really found three parts of my old business app, my legacy file, um, that needed to be protected and preserved and moved on. The first, you know, obviously, is all the data. We had 30 years of business history, you know, not just people and contact information, but products and pricing, and, and everything was tied up in there. And on day one of running the newly converted one, all that data had to be accurate. The second thing, oops, back up one, um, is what I call the data plumbing, that you need that data to seamlessly flow through the application. Um, you have a single entry point, whether it's a name or a phone number or a product or a price, and then just with push buttons and scripts, all of that data has to move through the system. And that plumbing uh, is really important because 
At the end of the day, you need the data to fall out into your reports. To run a business well, you've got to have accurate reports, which means your data coming into it has to be accurate. So your data plumbing has to be right. And then, of course, it has to go to accounting um, to keep your accountant and the IRS and the bank happy. So these things were all found in my old application in the field definitions and in the relationships. And those two things worked together to make all that happen. And I knew for sure that on day one, when we opened with the new version, it had to have all of that. It had to be perfect. It had to run perfect. And I could not mess it up. So I was feeling a bit of pressure. Um, the final part of it was what I call the user interface behaviors. Um, they'd been built literally over decades, um, kind of like one BB at a time. You just stack up one behavior on another until you've got this huge stack of BBs. And my final job was going to be to you know, rebuild all of those. So this is the process that I used. Um, five steps. I was pretty scared of them at the beginning, but it went pretty well. Um, the first step was to just go into my old legacy file and clean up the dead branches. I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about there. We all seem to leave some of those behind. Um, but I didn't want to waste any time reproducing stuff that, that we weren't going to use. The next thing was to build the tables and field definitions, then to import the data, then duplicate my relationships so that everything worked together, and then finally rebuild all the user behaviors. Um, so we can go a little more into detail on those. The clean up the dead branches doesn't need much. But when it came to building the tables and the field definitions, I was really intimidated with this because I had 56 files, a few thousand field definitions, all of this history and all of this plumbing. And how's that going to happen? And I found out that you could do it with copy and paste. Um, and I'm good at copy and paste. So, I took my 56 files, I copied the file name, I went to my new, brand new one, and created 56 tables, and I pasted the table names from the old file names. And then I went back through and I did the same thing with field definitions. I would open up the field definitions, hit select all, copy, then go to the new version in uh, FileMaker 16 at the time, and paste. And uh, what I was most scared of, what I was most intimidated about, oh, only took me a few days. So I was right away on to phase three, which was to import the data. And of course, I found right away that as long as I was good at the copy-paste on phase two, the import data by matching names always worked absolutely perfect. I didn't ever have any data import problems. But I did adopt sort of a religious mantra of thou shalt not change a name, because the minute you start changing names, then this magic button of import data by matching names quits working. Uh, and that would be a problem. The fourth thing I had to do, I was not sure the right way to do it. Fortunately, the first thing I tried seemed to work, so uh, I did it. Um, Basically, what I did on the left, you can see uh, the original file. This particular one was my area rug inventory. And then it's surrounded by about 20 of its best friends, the other files in the old legacy solution that it depended upon to get its work done. So I took that exact same model, went to the relationship graph in the new single file, and in that, relationship graph, I made each of my 56 originals into a base table. So I had 56 base tables. And then I surrounded each base table with all of the same friends it had before, with table occurrences to everyone, and was very careful not to just get the relationship right, but to go through and on the uh, uh, edit preferences for relationships, to make sure that every checkbox was checked exactly the same on the new system as it was on the old one, so that I had a really good match for all the relationships. 
once that was all done, it was like the, the foundation was there and everything was going to be happy. But I found some things that didn't automatically connect. So I had to go through all the calculated fields that relied on relationships and just check those and make sure they caught the right relationship. Um, the good news about using copy and paste to build all those names is that if something didn't line up correctly, it was really easy to track down and to correct because it would be in the same drop-down list in the same alphabetic order that it had been in the legacy. So things were easy to line up. I had to do the same thing with the lookups that I did with the calculations just to make sure that they all had the right attachments and uh, would, would always get the right information. And uh, they seemed to work just fine. Once the plumbing was done, I got to do the user interface, which to me is the fun part, because that's where you get to apply some art and some style to your business know-how, sort of mesh the two together and, and get the thing running. Um, my original was built to be very fast. I was running a uh, retail business in Vail and also a, a, a high-speed um, wholesale flooring business down in Denver. So all of this stuff had to, had to work quickly. And my inspiration for my original design came from a favorite hobby back in the 80s and 90s. I would go to a, a busy bar, like a Hard Rock Cafe or something, find just the right bar stool that I could sit there and look over the bartender's shoulder, his touch screen. And by the end of two beers, I knew exactly how their operating system ran. And to prove I'm that big a geek, I went home and built one myself that looked just like that. That was my home screen. Um, you know, pretty garish, but really high function, really high speed. So I needed to get all of this function and all of these user behavior sequences into the new system. And I did it again with the magic of copy and paste. I would copy a layout from the old legacy file paste it into a blank layout in the new one, and then check and make sure all the data lined up correctly, the portals worked right. Once the data was correct, and it usually was, um, then I could go to work on the buttons. And one at a time, button by button, I worked through every behavior sequence, often using copy and paste for additional layouts or copy and paste for scripts. Uh, sometimes it was easier to just write the script, but one way or another, I went through every single one in the entire uh, FileMaker solution to reproduce every behavior so that on day one, everybody could get to work. Um, what this, this one was an area rug order, pretty simple. Um, the new version looked like this, a lot easier to look at. A lot more function built into it with new features like um, drop downs for the menu lists or pop-ups for accomplishing tasks that in the old legacy version, because it was going from file to file to file, just to enter a customer payment on an order, you jumped through three windows and three layouts and three different files, and then you had to come back. And that was really jumpy and awkward for users. Um, most of those things I was able to accomplish with either sliders or pop-ups or tabs or you know, expedited ways to make those happy or make those function and keep the people happy without jumping all over the place. Now, when it was time to implement it, uh, again, I was kind of worried about how this was going to go. Um, but I found that treating the people in my business as expert users and testers and running the two parallel for a while they were able to get in and you know, they recognized all their business. They could hit their AR report button and their accounts receivable matched. Uh, and every time I'd do an import, I'd have them go through and check all their stuff. And uh, they got a lot of confidence built up over time. Uh, and we did that through December of 2017. Uh, January of 20, 2018, uh, I did a new import so that when they came to work, all of their stuff was correct in the new version. But we ran parallel again for another couple weeks while I had them each go through a checklist of all the behaviors. I had three pages of just, you know, 
Can you find an order? Can you find a customer? Can you write a new order? Can you change a price? Um, until they'd all gone through their checklists and, and I was comfortable that everyone could do it. And I think the learning curve was really uh, quick because I made the new one look so much like the old one and behave like the old one uh, that they were all uh, pretty quick to pick it up. And I did get regular feedback from them uh, as far as like screenshots and notes on, you know, this isn't working right or what happened to that and how come I can't do this. But within the first few months, I had knocked out all of those. So again, those were the five steps that I took to reproduce my old legacy into a new FileMaker single file. Um, I cleaned up the dead branches. I built the tables and field definitions using copy and paste. I imported the data using match field names. Uh, I duplicated the relationships the best I could and then rebuilt the user interface behaviors using all the brand new FileMaker tools, so it was really kind of fun. The results, uh, 2018, our business jumped up 20%. Um, and because the only thing that I really changed that year was the operating system to the new one, uh, the cost stayed the same. So that meant sort of a big windfall profit year for me. I was really happy with that. In addition to me being happy, we had happy customers because they were served well, and happy employees because they didn't have much um, frustration. Everything ran quicker, cleaner, better, more fun for them. Um, so that's quickly how I moved it up to date. Um, happy to take any questions and ask for reviews. It's the same way we finish carpet jobs. Thanks. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, well, I worked on it for about a year and a half from start to finish, but because I was doing so many other things at the same time, um, you know, and I'd work in spurts. Uh, really, really hard to say. Um, I spent by far the most time on the user interface because the other mechanical parts of it that I was so afraid of uh, were actually so quick and easy. Please. Exactly, yeah, they would, and, and I was real crystal clear with them through December of 2017 and the first three weeks of January of 2018 that all the work that really mattered was still being done in the old legacy FileMaker system. But what I was asking them to do was when they processed some work in the old one, go to the new one and duplicate it. Um, not if it was a big difficult one, but just day in, day out work just to make sure that they could duplicate anything in the new one that they had in the old one. And then finally, the third week of January, I just didn't turn on the legacy system. I only turned on the new one and made them go to work on it. And, and they didn't run me out of town. It worked. Did you use some data migration tools? No. No. I was using 16 at the time, but just uh, maybe there's something better. Um, okay. <laughs> no, and I've got 30 years of all kinds of naming conventions. I probably went 15 years before I knew there was a naming convention. Um, and I was really tempted to do it, um, but I knew that the minute I started cleaning up field names, um, I was going to lose my import capability. And I, I've just left it like that. It works, and I'm not going to mess with it. Right. Exactly. 
Now, there were things that I could have consolidated, but because I just wanted my imports to be automatic and quick and clean, I just reproduced 100% of the field definitions and imported into them. So it was an exact match. I'm wondering whether the creation were by the work tree is the new tree that goes in the new system the same order as the old one. Yeah. And then you could have gone to town with names and it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. And again? Oh, a lot. Um, because I, you know, did all the layouts with themes and, you know, all in one file instead of 56 separate files, everything sped way up, um, like a ton. So that meant I could build much more complex layouts, like the home screen for my salespeople. They've got portals to everything they've got going on, every project, every order that's open, sample checkouts. And before, I really couldn't put that much stuff on a layout because it would take too long to load, but now it's super fast. One more? Have you thought about archiving? So we have different areas of data. We have a similar situation where we have some years of data and in your case you have a situation now where we're trying to figure out how to get data out of the system and maintain it as it gets lost. Are you thinking of trying and still be able to go back and refer to it if you need to? Um, I, I think for a lot of businesses, archiving would be very important where you have a lot of data, but this is just one little carpet store with less than 50 people, and we don't build up anywhere near the amount of data. You know, we, we do maybe 2,500 jobs a year, so we're not at all taxing that. Uh, please? A lot, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the ones that needed attention were the ones that bridged a relationship. Um, but those were all easy to line up again, and then they all worked. Please. How do you keep people from changing the data if that much sitting there? And what, what if they go back and they change it then? Um, the way the layouts and the user interface is built, once they push the magic button that this order is real, they can't ever get back into it. There are just no layouts available to them where they can go edit um, after it's been approved as a real order. Up until then, they can do anything they want to it, but after that, they can't touch it. So that's handled with layouts and with, with uh, security levels. Uh, I did not. Um, I think if I were not intimately familiar with every little bit of it, those could have been handy. But because it was like my 30-year project, you know, I knew them, knew them all like they were my pets. And please. Did you make any efforts on your calculated fields to remove any of those and replace them with scripting or anything like that as you're going through? I didn't. I. I, once I'd committed to the idea that I am just plain going to copy this thing as it is, um, I, stuck, I stuck to it. Um, the, the thing that I found as I was working on it is there were like a million rabbit holes I could dive down, and I just had to present, prevent myself from doing that. I just, you know, hardcore, I'm going to duplicate this, and then I'll worry about the other stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely the file names first to tables, the field definitions to field definitions. Um, most of my value lists were actually contained in a lists database, so reproducing that database uh, as opposed to a bunch of custom lists. Um, so, but that sequence mattered because you can't, you can't hook them up if they aren't there in advance. Um, sure. Any regrets for the process? 
Um, well, my biggest regret was that I waited so long um, because I thought it was going to be just horribly hard. Uh, I could have done it a few years earlier, no, no trouble, because um, being able to copy and paste most of it really expedited the thing. It shouldn't, I shouldn't have been so scared. Great, thanks. We've got about 15 minutes before the next one. So thank you very much, and good luck if you're in the middle of one of those. <laughs>